welcome to the Taylor Treasures Thursday Talk Show. Hello, Hello and the welcome name is back. It's longer now. It is very long. <laughs> so uh, this is episode two of the show. Um, as you know, uh, this is a bonus uh, bonus podcast. Our we had some talk show. Technical difficulties. Yeah, the last one there was some disaster with the actual footage. There was the audio, but no footage. So we decided to give you. Uh, the next week, a extra show, but just to let you know, it's going to go back to just first Thursday of every month after this this episode. We hope that this also has video. We think we figured it out. Yeah, but I think yeah, I think the we're camera good could now. just decide to turn off. So yeah. you never know. I I didn't do a step I was supposed to do. I'll do it this time. It'll work. So, um, and also we have merch. If you want some merch, um, we're not wearing it now, but uh, that's linked below or it's linked on our YouTube channel. You can go yep. go get some merch. Um, so the two topics we're going to talk about today are, number one, do we regret being homeschooled? Mm -hmm. And number two, we're going to read from our old journals slash diaries um, after after the Tale of Treasure Box. Yep, we got some interesting tidbits. Yes, that'll be fun. Um, so as I said before, uh, last week, I always start with a quote. I'm going to start with three this time because I think they're really, really, really good. I couldn't just pick one. So... This is from um, Agatha Christie. It says, I suppose it is because nearly all children go to school nowadays and have things arranged for them that they are so forlornly unable to produce, produce their own ideas. And then we have Roger Lewin um, says, Too often we give children answers to remember rather than problems to solve. And number three I have from Margaret Hauschel. And she says, um, You will not reap the fruit of individual individuality in your children if you clone their education. So I thought that was really um, some really good quotes to start with. Um, but I guess the, what we'll answer first is do we regret being homeschooled? Because most of the, I'm in my last year of being homeschooled. She was yeah, graduated. Yeah, all the way through. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, the short answer is uh, no. We don't regret no, being homeschooled at all. Not. No. Um, and you know, this isn't to point fingers at anyone who's gone to school or puts their kids in school. This is just about our own personal experience about homeschooling and how we think it was a uh, really positive thing for our whole our whole growing up years. Yeah, um, because I feel like there's, obviously, everyone kind of knows how school is, but there's a lot of people who don't really know. Like, homeschooling is, like, foreign, and it's not talked about. It's getting more popular, mm -hmm. but it's not talked about quite as much. So we just wanted to give our perspective because we did that, and right. it's not like you know as popular as going to school is. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and uh, also I apologize if my voice sounds really froggy. It's the morning. <laughs> I haven't she talked hates much. Filming in the morning. <laughs> I know. I'm I like, also look tired. Go. Let's do morning stuff. Let's I was. I woke up with... a whole hour before you. So well, be okay. quiet. Today I got to sleep in. Yes. Because it's my semi day off. Yeah. Normally I'm up for you. So it's true. Um, but getting back to what we were talking about, uh, so also, um, I think every lifestyle or every homeschooling lifestyle varies from house to house. Um, I really like how we did it, but you know, everyone has their own way of doing it because that just works for them. Um, and I think w one thing I really liked about homeschooling or still like, cause I'm in my last year is, um, it really, it gave me the flexibility to learn what I was interested in and go into actual hobbies that I loved, um, go to places that I wanted to see, all while learning the core things you have to learn, like math and reading and writing and stuff like that. Um, and would you agree? I mean, we both kind of got to go into what we really enjoyed instead of not having yeah, time. Because people are obviously unique, and so for us, we were d interested in different things, and we're obviously going to end up doing different things in life. Mm -hmm. So our parents it didn't make sense to like teach us the exact same thing because why would you do that you're giving people of course like she said there's the things you have to know for life but yeah. you know you definitely learn those but then it is more personalized like you you know you feel like you're getting to explore what feeds you instead of just mm -hmm. following what everyone else is doing right right and I also think with being homeschooled you're doing like a lot of your life you're out living real life with a lot of different people and I think one thing that really helped me with homeschooling is I'm very comfortable with being around all sorts of ages whether that's younger older or the same age as me and I really learned that 
friends come in all shapes and sizes and ages. I mean, you can have friends who are, you know, way younger than you. You can have friends that are 30 years older than you. You can have friends who are about the same age. And honestly, growing up, I loved spending time with people who were older than me. Like, our neighborhood kids, like, they were all older than me. I was the youngest, and I loved to go around and play with them. And um, I, ha I was... I think I was really friends with a lot of my parents' friends, um, and because I, you know, they would come over and I would just sit there. I love to just sit there and listen and say my a few things and. Because you like to be involved in every. Yes, so it was really cool they to didn't me. Didn't want to miss a thing. Right, and I also think it was the people I was surrounded by because I always felt as a kid, you know, it's a kid's perspective, but I always felt that whenever I was around the adults that were my parents' friends, they would include me. They would let me talk. They would talk to me. I didn't feel like I wasn't, I wasn't, like, wanted there. And so a lot of those people that I spent time with because I was homeschooled, um, because that was a lot of our time was just spending time with different kinds of people. Um, a lot of my, I have a lot of friends who are way older than me, and I'm totally cool with that. And a lot of them are actually my parents' friends who are now my friends. And we talk, we have fun together, and I think that's a really important thing that is not... Well, yeah, because when you are in life, you're going to be around different ages, mm -hmm. and it's nice that, like, I'm the same way. I feel totally comfortable. I have a friend who's, like, almost 60, yeah. but then I have, you know, a, our cousin who's a little bit younger. I'm still friends with her, and, you know, it's kind of... It's just kind of neat that you never feel... I, I never, like, felt weird, like, you know, oh, this person is two years younger, two years older, or they're an adult. You just, it never registers that, like, you can't be friends with any age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a thing in school that, um, when you're surrounded by the same age all the time, it, it's tough to go out into the world and be comfortable with every age, because you've been so accustomed to just being around people of the same age, and then... You know, you have your teachers, but that's a little bit different of a relationship than just being well, you, friends. you're not supposed to be friends with your teachers. Yeah, either. right. Like, that's totally a different yeah. thing. And, you know, I felt that because I went to ballet. I would never say, now I am. But when I was a kid, I would never say I was friends with my, like, dance teacher. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're they're different. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, going into that, I think because I was living life so young, like, just regular life, being around all these people... Um, I think when you're around different ages, you all learn from each other because you all have different, th you've all have different experiences or in different stages in life. So you can share to, you know, each other, even a younger person can help an older person, a young, an older person can help a younger person. And yeah, I think when you're in school, you're all kind of in the same state in life. It's not that you all have the same life, but it's hard to get the real like wisdom and the things that you would learn from each other if you're all kind of in the same same stage in life you know it's hard to yeah and that's really not just gain. for school I was actually listening to a podcast the other day where they were talking about um this place in Florida where it's this huge number I don't know I don't remember numbers very well but it's this huge number and it's like you pretty much can't live there unless you're a senior citizen mm -hmm. and they were just discussing like I don't know if they went there or they knew somebody who did, but it was kind of weird. Like, yeah. it just didn't feel... Like, they thought it would be maybe fun to, like, go there and visit, but to live around people that are only, like, above 65, you know, you're going to lose something to a certain extent, and I feel like for older people, when you're around someone younger, I think it does keep you a bit younger, yeah. you know? So it's just like not not necessarily just school aged kids, but in general, I think yeah. if you only are around people exactly your age, you kind of miss out on something. You do, yeah. So yeah, I think that's a big thing with homeschooling is that we were able to learn so much from people who weren't the same age as us, and we're able to just you know have friends and be comfortable with with every age. Um, and another big thing is because we had the flexibility in life to go do things instead of just being in a schoolroom for a lot of the day and then you have all the homework when you get home it's tough to go out and really experience things like we would go we go to the zoo all the time now, i know kids go to the zoo all the time too but you know we go to the zoo with our mom we go to the aviary but also 
on top of that, we got to go and experience trips. Like we went to the Grand Canyon when I was only, you know, seven. Um, and we got to see like the show, Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, they did 25th year reunion and we got to go to California. Well, it's funny that. you bring up the aviary because I, um, was going through an old notebook and when we would go to the aviary, we couldn't just like, I mean, go there. Like there was a reason we were there. So yeah. I have notes from January 8th, 2013, titled Aviary. These were the things that I had to, like, she would, you know, sometimes tell us, okay, find three interesting facts or something. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Um, lorikeets, which are really loud, obnoxious birds. Oh, yeah. They're very colorful, though. They're pretty. Um, they rarely land on the ground. Hmm. How about that? I didn't know that. Yep, they rarely land on the ground. Um, African penguins... Every penguin has a different pattern on their chest. It's kind of like a human fingerprint, but on penguins. Yeah. So stuff like that, you know, like... Right, we would we go... We would do, you know, learning stuff, but it was more interactive and, you know, not necessarily like we had a checklist. It was just like, right. oh, find some things that you can... Yeah, when our mom would take us to these places, it wasn't just spontaneous. Like, she had a goal, you know, that she would have us, you know, watch out for that thing or, or let's, let's learn about this thing over here. That's neat. And she would, I mean... Even, like, back to learning things we were interested in, if there was a certain animal that we saw at the zoo or something that we really, really thought was cool, we, we went home, and we would go research about that animal, and we would learn about it, and then we would learn all these new things about it just because we were interested in it. We saw Yeah, and it. I remember, um, like, from traveling, one time we were in Vermont, and I think it was just my mom heard this, like, really loud noise, like we were outside in a tent or something maybe Nathaniel heard it too there were like one or two people who heard it and it was our goal to find out what the heck was that sound and this was before like you could just google things easily mm. so we had to like wait till we came home and then we sat down on our computer and we looked through all these different like nature sounds in Vermont and then we found out it was a moose yeah and we never would have guessed that. that right because it did not sound like what do you think a moose would sound like no yeah <laughs> yeah also moose are they're a lot bigger than you would think. Like I've seen, like scale. Like they're humongous. They're actually it's, quite terrifying. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know how I'd do if I ever met a moose because they're supposedly not very nice. Either. Yeah, they're, I think they're kind of nasty. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that's that's a big thing that we would get to just you know experience a whole lot of things and and um, you know like just go experience things. Like what's some other things that we did? Like actual trips that we went on. I'm trying to think. Like. I would say lot. Gettysburg. Because, oh, yeah, we went to Gettysburg. I mean, yeah. you can read a book about the Civil War, but there's nothing like actually going there. Right. And getting the tour, becoming Junior Rangers. Oh, we, we went to all sorts of parks and became Junior every Rangers. Every national park, you can become a Junior <laughs> you Ranger. Get a little and pen. Pretty cool, We actually. did it till probably we were too old. Like, yeah. I was probably like <laughs> 16 or yeah. 17 yeah. and yeah. we were still doing it. But yeah. the parks people thought it was cool because usually 16 and 17 year olds are just yeah. like... And honestly, it's uh, stupid. That's for little kids. But we're like, sure, I want a badge. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's funny because a lot of, when we would go to a lot of parks um, and we would get those little badges, a lot of the rangers were like surprised, like, oh, wow, you're actually doing it. You actually did it. And they were it. so happy because yeah. they sit behind a desk and are bored all day. I know. And people don't yeah. ask many questions. It's true. So we would almost get like, because we would also go at weird times. We would go like when kids were in school, we would go That's in a September nice thing too. or October, yeah. which you avoided all the crowds. And we would get, like, personal tours. They would just, like, take us around and tell us all sorts of stuff because mm -hmm. they were honestly bored. <laughs> yeah. And they were They're... like, oh, you're actually interested. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the zoo one time, we went when there weren't a whole lot of crowds because it was in the morning. And we went to the polar bear uh, area where they, like, jump in the water and you're, like, under the water and you it's can like see It's like a glass them. thing. Yeah. Can, yeah. And we were told that there was one time, only one time per day, that they would come, come in the water and swim, and you'd be able to watch them. So we went really early in the morning, and we just, like, took games and snacks and stuff and just waited. And it's funny, because we were, like, at one point, like, okay, we've been here a really long time. So we, Yeah, we missed whatever window they said. It was, like, around 10 or something, and we'd been there from, like, 9, it was almost noon, and we're like, okay, yeah, I guess they're not going. Right, so we left, and then we were up at the top... And all these people started crowding around where we were just at, like up above. 
and they jumped in like just after we walked out. We got we're to like, see them. Oh, we were man. outside, I think, right? Or did we go yeah, back well, in? We saw everybody running down. We oh were yeah. Like, why are they all running in there? <laughs> yeah. And then we ran back in, and they jumped in. So we didn't get to right. see them. We didn't see them actually jump in. Right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that's that's a big thing because I think when you're in school, it's tough to just go and take trips and stuff. Like it all has to be packed in in the summertime, and that's it's not as enjoyable just because you're around all the crowds and even like in the fall I feel like a lot of kids like they just don't have the time to go and do that because they have all their their schoolwork and extra yeah programs there's like field trips and stuff yeah I mean for me I would because we would see field trips Mm -hmm. there's no way you can like stop and really to me like explore like talk to a ranger or anything because there's just no time like there's a lot of kids well that yeah that's the thing say if you're in a big group with kids in this field trip you know there there might be one kid that's not interested in something and another kid that wants to watch and stay say watch a i don't know lion do some certain thing like you can't really do that because you have a certain time you have to keep walking and yeah it's just it's different when you do a field trip um and i think another big thing too is we we went through school with like well homeschooling with not a certain time you had to learn certain things like we learned things when we were ready and i think that's a big thing that a lot of kids in school they're all because they're all in the same room they all kind of have to teach them the same thing at the same time and some kids may really excel at that because they're just ready for it another kid might might not and maybe that kid would feel oh maybe i'm not as smart and I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's just that everyone's brain develops differently and everyone is going to retain something at a different time than a different, you know, another kid. So with homeschooling, when we learned something, she would teach us when we were ready. And that also, in turn, we were able to retain that information because our brains were ready to hear it, you know. Yeah, so it doesn't always mean that you can't learn something or you are bad at it. It just means maybe you're not quite ready. Mm -hmm. And I feel, um, for me, with homeschooling, I just felt pretty prepared for life stuff. Like, um, you know, it's not necessarily that, like, you know everything, but you know exactly how to find out the answers to stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. um, especially because I own a business, and when I started a business, I mean... I had someone who helped me, like, do the first steps, like, okay, you got to get your business EIN and all this stuff, but I didn't really know anyone who was, like, running a successful small business that I could necessarily, like, shadow in a way. Like, I, I met people, but um, not someone close who could give me, like, all the tips or whatever. Um, so I had no idea what I was doing, but I was able to just go and kind of find the info, I mean, you know, researching or um, just seeing how things worked and being able to realize, okay, is this risk worth it? Is it not worth it? Um, And I just think that I never was, like, afraid necessarily. I never felt like, oh, well, you don't have a master's in business or you don't have, like, experience or anything like that. I was like, well, you know what? I'll just give it a try doesn't work that's yeah. fine right and then it worked which is cool but even now like I still don't know everything I still am not perfect at it and I'm always trying to figure out new things and learn new things and I think that's just a really good skill because it's not like I don't hit a wall of like well I don't know how to do that I didn't take a class in that mm-hmm. you know I'm like well okay how, how do you do that let's go figure it out let's go ask somebody let's go google it. well I think yeah you know? that goes back to that quote that I read earlier let me read it again. Um, that too often we give children answers to remember rather than problems to solve. And I think that's that's the thing um, that we were taught because we were taught in a certain way that we were taught to problem solve. And I think kids in school are more taught to just learn the answers to this thing or that thing and not so much, you know, go and figure that out, you know, on your own. Get your own information. Go figure that out and you can do it that way. I think it's it's tough for them because, you know, I don't know if I'm explaining it as well as I want to, but... Well, I think, <laughs> no, I, I, I notice a lot of times, like, um, another thing I would say is that I think 
well, I think all of all three of us kind of, we felt pretty confident as kids. Like there wasn't a lot of feeling like, um, you know, I don't know that we weren't smart or that, you know, we were trying to compete in a way, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think that was really a thing. And I, I noticed like right now there's a big theme about like, um, be your own person and, and dance to your own tune and just embrace yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if a lot of people are saying that, it kind of makes me feel like, well, maybe there's a lot of people that don't feel that they are comfortable with who they are, that they yeah. are confident. And, um, you know, I, I always felt like all of us were just kind of like, okay, yep, that's just me. Like, yeah. I, we never felt like we were not enough for something or we were comparing ourselves. You know, to a certain extent, you're always going to compare yourselves to people. But I think, um, you read a quote from Agatha Christie, but I, she also has another quote that says, one of the luckiest things that can happen to you in life is to have a happy childhood. Um, and I think we all did. Not mm -hmm. saying that kids in school don't, but I just think it was there was like not any extra competition or drama or anything like that mm -hmm. um and I think when you start at peace with yourself as a kid when you get to an adult that just carries over and I, I just think maybe some adults now didn't feel that way and they're trying to discover really who they are you right know? yeah I think your mom gave us the the you know kind of helped us along that way and she never pushed us in a way that we would feel like we weren't doing enough or we weren't doing it well. Like, she would just be like, okay. Like, I remember one time I was learning, I think it was like some math thing or something, and I was getting really frustrated and I wasn't, I wasn't getting it. And I think she was just like, okay, well, we'll just, we'll just stop for a while. And we stopped for a while. And then we came back to it a certain time later and I was able to do it just because I was ready for it. I wasn't, you know, she didn't keep pushing me and said, you need to learn this right now because you're not doing it well enough or, or whatever. You, you right. Know. And I think in school, it's not anybody's fault, but there's mm -hmm. really not time for that. Like so you have kids. certain hours where you need to be teaching this thing. You can't like say to a kid, all right, well, we'll circle back in like three hours or yeah. we'll just come back to it in a week. Like, and I understand that that just wouldn't be practical. So you know, you do in school have to teach things at a certain time to make it function. Mm -hmm. But homeschooling gives you a little more flexibility, especially because there's no like set hours either. I mean, you could do it at six in the morning or three in the afternoon or eight at night. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and also, I think our mom always likes to call it whole life learning instead of that's her favorite yeah that's term. her favorite term she loves to use that <laughs> I like whole life, life learning, learning. <laughs> um but I think it's true because um homeschooling has taught us that you never stop learning even after you graduate or even after college and I think that's not a sentiment that's in school I think school says you learn all this up to this point and then go and get a job and then that's it like we are encouraged by mom to just like keep learning our whole lives, keep finding a new hobby, keep learning this or that, or, you know, you know, explore this area, you know, because then you'll kind of get in a rut and you might, you know, just end up, I don't know, watching, binging shows because you just don't know what else to do after your job. And I think we were able to go and a big thing is hobbies. Like we, there are certain things that we like to do. And yeah, I think just, just keep learning. Like you can do it you know, wherever you are, just... Yeah, and I think, you know, we call ourselves whole life learners. There are different styles of homeschooling, mm -hmm. and, you know, the honest truth is I personally have seen some that are super strict, and mm -hmm. then I've seen some that are, like, whoo, there's, like, no structure or anything at all. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not like homeschooling is perfect, you know. Yeah. It really comes down to the people that are doing it, who the parents are, right. um you know, how you want to go about it. Maybe some people need more structure. Maybe some people need less structure. Right. Um, but, you know, it's it's not like you can necessarily classify that everyone who's homeschooled is the same because mm -hmm. they're not. It, it varies a lot with how people do it. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think um, I would say the biggest thing that people seem to get, like, concerned about or they are hesitant to do it is... They think that homeschool kids don't have any friends, 
they're like super awkward Mm -hmm. and you're just like you'll never have friends in your life and that's 100 percent not true because we have lots of friends yeah (laughs) i think we were very socialized yeah um and like we said i think we had even more friends because we could be friends with all ages but we definitely had kids who were our age or close to it who we were friends with um and I would say it does take a little extra work because kids in school, that's who you're around, so there's friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but ours was more like there would be homeschool groups we would go to um, or, you know, we would meet other homeschool families. We were also friends with kids who were at school if they were our neighbors or, you know, they were friends with their parents and we played with their kids. Um, we definitely were exposed to a lot of kids and we had a lot of people to to play with and we weren't yeah. like I don't think we were super awkward no. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I am now right and I and I think yeah the two things I would say is yeah you do have to work a little bit at it um it's not impossible and it's it's also a good skill because as the homeschool kid you do have to kind of be the person to reach out sometimes mm-hmm. um not always. Sometimes you'll have people that it just naturally happens. But um, I think that's a really good skill because I think, again, people as adults, they have no idea how you make friends. Like, because once you leave college and if you move somewhere else, you get really lonely because you're like, well, I don't have my my group anymore. What do I do? Um, yeah, and I'm not like the most outgoing person, I would say, but um, I have learned how to approach people who I think are very nice or I think I would get along with and kind of start conversations and then friendships happen and um two of my best friends right now it just kind of naturally happened I you know I had to reach out a little bit um but you know I think as an adult that's a really nice skill to have so you know that's just something I have noticed I think the biggest thing people are like whoa it's you don't the have any friends. It's the stereotype, no. I think, because I I don't know. Maybe early on homeschooling, when people were still just figuring out what it was, maybe that was a thing with kids back then. But may, I think now, you know, homeschooling is definitely a lot more popular than it was. And you know, if if you're you know if you're really worried about your kid not having friends or something with homeschooling. There's all sorts of homeschool groups you could go to with that they could make friends there if they say they, you know, I think also for us, we were on a street that thankfully had some kids that we really got along with and we had fun with. But, you know, if your kid lives on a street that there really aren't any kids, then yeah, you could put them in a a co-op or something. Yeah, and I mean, I would say I went through one phase where I did feel like I didn't have that many friends. Um, I think it was just... I don't know if, you know, because we played with our neighbors a lot. They were kind of moving on, and then um, I, you know, some of the homeschool kids that I knew kind of went off and did their own thing. Um, We're all going to have stages in life where we don't feel like we have a ton of friends. Um, But I, you know, I just kind of still enjoyed life, and I always kept on the lookout, and um, that's actually the time that I met the two people who were kind of my best friends now. Mm-hmm. was during that time when I felt like, oh, gee, I don't have that many people <laughs> yeah. who are my friends right now right. Um, that are my age, I guess, because when people think friends, they usually think people that are your age. Yeah. You know, I still had people that were older and younger, but... Yeah, and I would say, I think if you're going to go with, as she said, if you're thinking of friends as your own age, I think, personally, I don't have you know, a a majority, like, a lot of friends that are my age. I have a few, um, that are my age, but I never felt that I was lacking in friends because I thought any age could be my friend, so, you know, again. Yeah, and I think you, when you are homeschooled and you do make friends, it's, it's more, I don't know, I want to say more real, but it's definitely, like, authentic and deeper, Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, like, even if you only have one or two, but they're really good friends, I think that's so much better than having ten friends, but you're not really close to any of them, you yeah. know, so I, I think it also, you know, people can look from the outside, even at someone in school, you know, there's people in school who are just more quiet, but if they have that really one good friend, that's all that matters. Really. Yeah, I think, you know, I believe that, you know, 
this doesn't even have to do with, I don't think, homeschooling, but I think it's always better to have just that one or those few really close friends than to have a large group of friends that you're not really that close to any of them, you know? I think that's not as valuable when with the friendship. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, um, uh, also another thing is, you know, if you'd ask, you know, did you ever feel like you missed out on the school experience or you missed out on being in school? And the truth is, no, not really, because all my f- school friends who were in regular school... Said they didn't like Yeah, it. I never met one kid that ever had s- something positive to say so about public it, school. So, it starts, if you watch, when kids are little and they're, like, in kindergarten... Yeah, school, oh, so like, exciting. Exciting. Yeah. Because you color and yeah. you do things. And right. then when our friends got to be, like, middle school and high school, not one of them, like, liked it. No. So we were like, well, why would we feel bad that we're yeah. missing And not only that? did they not like it, they also, when we would told, tell them we're homeschooled and what it was, they were like, oh my gosh, I wish I was doing that. That's so cool. Yeah, no one ever said to us, like, well, that's weird. No, like, one never. One of our friends in school. Yeah. They just were just like, well, that's cool. Right. Can I do that? So, like, the whole thing with, um, you know, uh, you know, homecoming or prom or any of that, I never really felt like I missed out because I never heard any of my friends coming away and going, oh my gosh, that was the most awesome thing ever. Yeah, you I think out. if we, like, had looked at how... The media and TV shows and things like that, like, portray school. Mm -hmm. It looks fun. It looks like you all do things. You go to, like, a fancy prom and you go... Yeah. But when we talked to people, they were like, prom is boring. Yeah, it's just awkward. Like, you just sit around. And then I had to... (laughs) Or, like, they hated it because no one asked them. And then they felt really bad. Or So, I never heard, like, a super positive... Not to say there aren't, but... Yeah, there might be just, like, a few that do actually enjoy it, but... But the people we were around were like... Eh, yeah, it's not that great. So. Even even adults too. When we would tell them about homeschooling, for the most part, you know, the adults that we were around were pretty supportive of it. Like a lot of them really liked it. Maybe there are a few that didn't quite understand it because they're yeah, not you'd, a part you'd of have it. the people yeah. who give you like the look. Yeah, you, right. you'd know. Yeah, <laughs> and we had to like you know make sure they knew that we were learning. Yeah. And we're just like sitting at home eating cookies and yeah. cake. And there are a few that um, you know they're not really ever going to really understand it or maybe like they don't not, think but like they're not someone we're close to so right. honestly what does it matter yeah like, it, gonna be it doesn't bother that, us but um, even though some of them that were did find it kind of odd at first over time when they got to know who we were they ended up not having a problem with it anymore because they saw that you know we weren't being neglected or anything like that like we were we were really learning and so they were they were cool with it after they got to know us yeah especially like um Whenever, like, I started getting jobs, I'd be like, why? Like, they would just, like, say, we're so glad you're working here. You're such a good employee because I'm so great. But, <laughs> no, like, just, and I was like, why? I'm just doing my job. Yeah. But, you know, I think that was interesting for them to see that someone homeschooled was very responsible. I was always told I was pretty mature, but I could also just be. That's also I mean, you, too. She's always, she never was a teenager. She went from kid to, well, to adult. Okay, so... <laughs> I, it's funny, because I didn't really necessarily think of it that way, but I do remember my one ballet teacher, when I was probably like 11 or 12, she would like teach my level, and then the next level was teenager, and she was like, never become a teenager, because she didn't like them. <laughs> and so I guess I didn't. Yeah. I think, but, I, I, think I did, but uh, yeah, I'm in the t- you teenager. Became, you are a teenager. <laughs> You're in that phase. Yes, so. well, we're different people, different personalities. Yeah. Uh, That's the thing, though, yeah. like, you know... We are completely different, but homeschooling worked for both of us. And yeah. I, you know, I don't know how, you know. And that's also the thing that, like, if you put two different kids together, one kid might have really gotten through school just fine, learned everything, you know, everything was cool, and the other kid really struggled because they're both learning the exact same thing and their brains are different. So how is that going to work for them? Yeah, there's you know? this whole, like, story that you can look up about, like, animal school or whatever, but basically the point is, like, why would you teach a fish how to climb a tree and teach, like, a kangaroo how to swim? Mm -hmm. Like, why, why did they all need to learn that stuff? They, they're animals that do different things, you know, and that's Mm -hmm. kind of an interesting way to look at it because it is, like, people have different strengths and weaknesses and maybe you should focus on different areas for different people yeah yeah um yeah I think that's that's interesting Uh, there's one story um about there's a place I go to that they 
give like classes on like pottery and stuff like that and the guy who made it like it's a big thing now like it's a really nice place but the guy who started it years ago he was in high school and he was only interested in like the art of pottery like anything else to school like he just he did not like he liked to do pottery so the school surprisingly was like oh so this is what you like to do okay so they let him spend a lot of his day within school just working on pottery and here he is now with the whole building dedicated to for teenagers to come in and learn how to do pottery and he's really good at it now and you know so because they let him do that this is this is what he got to do um yeah if you let people explore areas that they feel drawn to and are interested in they're just naturally going to excel at it. Mm-hmm. They're going to be really good. And yeah. no one is good at everything. No. Like everyone has <laughs> their things that they're better at than others. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I guess the last thing I wanted to say was with being homeschooled, I never had to deal with the with bullying or peer pressure. Like those two things, because I was just with my siblings and with friends of mine, that whole thing wasn't there and I feel really grateful that I wasn't involved with that because that definitely those two things really affect people for the rest of their lives even if they were just kids when it happened it'll affect things that you do when you're 50 I mean it's it's a really sad yeah people thing. still struggle with mm-hmm. being bullied or you know feeling peer pressure it's it's really sad that yeah. that I mean, it's unfortunately very common, and it it's just sticks with you. I mean, things imprint on you as a kid, and, you know, being having a great childhood is great, but then if you have struggles where you were the person who was made fun of, yeah, that totally carries into things. And, um, you know, like, my brother, I don't know, I people always would, not always, but they would sometimes be like, oh, he must pick on you, or he must, you know, tease you, and I'm like, no, no, he doesn't. He, doesn't. he was never that brother that did the pranks or would like just like get you really mad. Like he or, would like, just steal your diary or like. No, he I never was, did like, that. He doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, guess it's partly his personality. It's just kind of yeah. Very, he's just a very laid, laid back, back guy, like, but nice person yeah, too. Right. But I don't know. I just never even considered that as a possibility. No, he was just fine. Like we were all fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, and even like arguing. I mean, we had our disagreements, but, I mean, I would see siblings who would get, like, mad at each other. Like, they just yeah. couldn't get along. And maybe it's from pressures at school. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Or if it's, you know, I don't know if it's actual home or school, but, um, and that, I mean, that's another thing, you know. We're, we're talking about homeschooling, how wonderful it was for us, but I realize there are some people that it just would never work for them, and I totally understand that. Yeah, um, and sometimes, honestly, school is an escape if someone has a bad home life Mm -hmm. it is good for them to be able to go somewhere where they have supportive teachers and things like that so we are not saying anything bad about school we just wanted to give our our impression of homeschooling because again i think a lot of people are kind of like what's that yeah what does that mean and we would say you know if you can do it if you're you know if it's working at home you know with with your kids or or with your parents i say go for it you know just try it you know my mom always like people will say to her i don't know how you do it and she'll be like well you probably could (laughs) yeah (laughs) right i mean i'm not saying i'm not like saying that she didn't do a lot of work because it is it's a lot of work yeah and she's amazing because she did it Mm -hmm. um and we're thankful that she did but it's not impossible if you're open to just exploring it and there's no harm in, in just trying you know you could always put them back into school if it's not working for for your certain and family. We all we also knew people who they did the homeschooling up until high school and then the kid wanted to go into school. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, so they only did it for a portion of the time. Well, also that's another thing. We were never forced to be homeschooled. Our mom would ask us every year, "Do you want to go to school?" We'd say, "No, we do or not." It was, <laughs> "Do you want to go to school?" <laughs> no. Yeah. No. But yeah, she'd just say, "Yeah, you want to go to school?" No, I do not. Yeah, okay. every, every yeah. fall. Okay, you want to go? No, nope, no, I don't. I'll be like, nope, nope, I like it here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think also, I think it also just gave us a chance to be really close with our family. We're very close. And it's, I'm not saying that if you go to school, you're not close with your family, but we were always together. So we're just naturally going to be closer with each other even now, even though we're not all in the school, homeschooled together. Um... Yeah, I think homeschooling just kind of gave us the freedom to, you know, 
grow into who we are and become who we are and not just be overwhelmed with all the stresses of of school and the homework and not that we didn't have some of that um because we did but it was given to us in not a a very high pressure way and so we were able to just learn who we are when we were a kid instead of going through all of school and then trying to figure out who you are when you're an adult and i think that happens to a lot of people um yeah, yeah. i mean it's a lot to figure out if you don't figure out when you're a kid i can't imagine yeah to figure it out just as an adult right so. So, yeah, it just gave us the experience to live, to no, to kind of figure out what normal life was like outside of, outside of a classroom. Because when you're in a classroom, that's not, that's not real life, you know. And so we got to go into, you know, we would take the example of a grocery store. We learned stuff in a grocery store. That was where our big math stuff was. Yeah. Like, what's the best deal on yeah. almond milk? Yeah, figure this out. And then I'll do this. Back. Yeah. And like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean... So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to say. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I think that pretty much covered it. We do not regret being homeschooled. Not at all. There you no. go. We really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I think it's really helped us for the rest of our lives. And I uh, really encourage you, um, if you want to give it a shot, go for it. You should and maybe try it out. ask someone who is homeschooled. Because yeah, there are a lot of homeschool stereotypes. And yeah. as we said, uh, we, I, we don't think we're a stereotype. Like, I don't think we are, no. <laughs> decent normal human beings right yeah so just ask somebody who was homeschooled and see what they say yes yeah um so yeah that's what we wanted to say for the um homeschooling portion if you have any questions in the comments we'd love to hear your thoughts and um we're going to take a break and then we'll be back for the taylor treasure box and now it is time for the Taylor Treasure Box! Oh, I don't know how to stuck? Oh no, it came off just fine. Alright. Okay. Uh, here we go. If we pick anything that's for visuals, we apologize to our anchor people watching. We will explain listening. what's happening. Listening. They're on yeah. anchor. They're not watching. They're oh, th that's right. You're listening. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is a visual. I have to wear the bunny ears with uh, the camo jacket for the rest of the show. So I have a tote back here full of costumes. And if we pick one of these for the rest of the show, we have to wear that thing. So what is yours? I have another dad joke. Okay. Man. What is it? Uh, what do you call a factory that makes okay products? Satisfactory. There you go. Yep. I need that one. <laughs> Satisfactory. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Okay. This is fitting Stuff. because we are recording this two days before Halloween, so... Huh! That is fitting, because I don't have a costume. Because I, I don't have one. I, don't know what I was saying. talking to Robert, and we don't have a costume either. We were just going to be like pizza or something. Just <laughs> pizza. Yeah, we have those pizza costumes. Yeah. Just wear those. I got it, guys. Here we go. Alright. This is my brother's jacket that he no longer wants, so I took it. Alright. So... For the people who don't have a visual, they yes, are so, white bunny ears with pink glitter sparkles. Yeah, just imagine very high bunny ears, and it's they're sparkly with, what are these, uh, sequins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have a lar oversized camo. What what year is this? There were, there are different designs for camo. This is the blocks. Like, How it looks would like I a, know? <laughs> I know well, the answer. They used to be like, like camo splotchy. This is the... Graphic. This is the graphic. This is like, um... Like computer pixels, digital. It looks like that. Yes, very digital. This is way too big. Okay. All right, guys, there you go. I am an oversized camo with bunny ears. So imagine that anchor watcher, not watchers, listeners. Sorry, I'm so used to YouTube watchers. I can't get that in my head that you're just listening. Okay, so there we go. Um, so now let's uh, let's take a break and we'll be back for our last segment. <music> And we are back for our last segment. And this, oh, I'm excited for this. This is reading our old journals slash diaries. Okay, so full disclosure, I couldn't find my journal or diary, which I'm really bummed. Oh, that's great. Because I, like, I journaled all the time. Yeah, you did. You did a million. But I did find um, two other of my many notebooks. I love notebooks. They're, like, everywhere. Yeah. Um, 
one is just a random notebook and the other one is like my Bible study journal-ish sort of thing from when I was little. Okay. And there's still some interesting stuff in there. So okay. sorry, I looked literally everywhere. <sighs> Such tore a disappointment, the house apart. Laura. I, I looked in the attic. I know. I looked in my room. Like a million. I looked in every drawer. I don't know where it is. I'm sorry. We're gonna go in, and her mom's gonna be like, "I knew exactly where they were. Why didn't you ask me?" So oh well. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so I had a journal. I did not have a diary. Do not call it a diary. It was a journal. And if you did. I was not happy. This was a journal, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Miss, I don't want to be girly. Uh, yeah, yes. So hers, I would I've never read them, but I'm assuming hers were more like your thoughts and emotions. This was just like a list. What happened in my day? One, two, three, four. Um, because actually my mom encouraged me to start a journal. I didn't encouraged. want to. Yeah, I didn't want to. She's like, you should write a journal. <laughs> yeah. So this was um, kind of a sort of assignment. I mean, I did end up liking it at certain points, but it only lasted for seven months, and I stopped from July to November, so it wasn't even seven months. See, I journaled all the time. I I, know. I stopped recently, like, when I became an adult because I got too busy. I, like, will occasionally journal, and then I'll journal, like, a ton, and then I'll be like, I'm going to do this every night, <laughs> yeah. and then I do it for a week, and then it's, like, it's eight months later. I look at the date, and I'm like, oh. I know. So I have, I have a couple in here that will show just how lazy I would be. Because I remember, like, wanting to go to sleep, like, ah, oh, i got to do the journal thing. And so I'd have to, like, get up and do it. And then I just kind of gave up. But I have this stuff so far. So I'll start with, uh, this was not, first day I started. Okay. So this was May 1st. Today, I am still sick. Still sick. I was trying to fend SpongeBob Squarepants. <laughs> Fend him. <laughs> and Nanny, that's our brother Nathaniel, helped me. At 11.15, me and Mama went to pick up Laura from babysitting. I was cell sick. I don't know. Uh, I'm selling sickness. I don't know. Uh, so, I couldn't go too. Me, Mama, and Laura got ice cream. I remember this day. For tonight. And then we... And we came home, and I <laughs> I could not spell the word watched, wifed, uh, <laughs> and I couldn't even, sometimes I would just give up, like I didn't even want to try to spell it, so I put in initials SS, something called SS, I didn't even try to. Uh-huh. But wasn't it, <sighs> honey, we shrunk the kids? That's not SS, but I know we watched that that night. I'll... Oh, that's the movie? I have no idea yeah. what that is then. Um, okay, so we came home and I watched SS tall 6 o'clock. And then Daddy and Nanny left for the retreat. And then Mama got the pizza and we ate A -E -T, it. And then we watched <laughs> this pack -a -pole me. While we oh ate. yeah because yes. they were going to the men's retreat so we had like a girls yeah thing. we got what was it Perry's ice cream I think probably yeah Perry's is the best yes um we ate cake and ice cream and then after that Laura went to bed of course <laughs> hey I had a busy <laughs> schedule yes yeah, well we opened the Sophia and me and Mama got polos and cavers and slipped what. What are polos and cavers? Polos and covers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, polos and cavers. And slept, I missed the tea, on the Sophia and watched Gone with the Wind. It's four hours long, so we didn't go to slip on tall 3 a.m. Good night. There's number one. <laughs> so, all right, very informative. That's a long one. Usually they weren't that long, so get ready. All right. All right, so for a visual for anyone who can't see, this is a pink stripy notebook with a panda, and you can actually pet his fur. He's like an interactive notebook. My but book the is the problem with notebooks. I like I like them, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's such a cute notebook!" Because my favorite um, aisle in any store, any Target, is the office supply section. It's my favorite. Okay. But then I'm like, you never actually see the front of your notebook because you just always leave it like un, un like this, like unwound. Right. So yeah. Anyway, so this was um, I would read like a couple verses in the bible and then i put m4m which was message for me 
and I was gonna read through the whole like the whole Bible that was my goal at this time okay and um, I made it to Deuteronomy <laughs> So you can <laughs> didn't see. even get through the Old Testament. It's <laughs> like that's as far as I'm going. So anyway, um, this one verse is from Genesis. Um, basically, it says in the future there. Oh, basically talks about how old people were and how God was going to change it to only 120 years. You can only live that long, mm-hmm. or something like that. And I wrote, I don't want to live till I'm 500. I'm glad. That would be too long. Yeah. It's too much. Well, it says, so I wrote, it says in Genesis 5.27 that Methuselah lived to be 969. <laughs> 900. Forgive I, me. It's way longer. <laughs> I can see why God shortened our lifespan to 120 years. Because you're old when you're 90. Is that how you spell it? So, until you were 969, you would be old all that time. <laughs> well, I think maybe they were kids longer back then. That's interesting, because I always thought of that when you have that much time I'm like did they just like get to adulthood and then stop aging well that's like what my brain state. was yeah i was like so if you were old at 90 then you'd be old for another like 800 years right. like that's terrible yeah it must have been different but then i was like maybe you were like a baby till you were like 70 i don't know well probably not <laughs> probably not <laughs> but they probably just that's her, no that's my brain was honestly i was trying to figure it I out know. i was like well maybe like, you were a kid for a lot longer. Right. But I don't think so. I think you got to adulthood and you just, like, aged very slowly yes. at that point. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's... I'll go on to my next one. Okay, so uh, this one says, Today we went to Karhafa, which is church. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And we climbed the... Now listen to this one. Come by my knee. <laughs> it's supposed what? to be... Communion. I wrote Kamaimaini. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, the Kamaimaini things. We're doing it this month, and then we came home, but me, Mama, and Nanny did the the far the farst part at Karth. Laura and Daddy helped at the marathon, and then we came to Karth. So I guess. Well, we go to church, come home, and then go back to church, I guess. Sounds I don't know. like it. <laughs> um, it was really nice weather today, and am re- 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 <laughs> R-E- maybe R-T-I-N-G. I don't. Uh, uh, writing. Whoa. Writing. <laughs> Didn't even put the W. <laughs> writing a letter to Dick Van Dyke for his autograph. Uh, on a picture of him. Good night. So this was when I started doing my uh, autograph writing. I have a bunch of autographs. Um, and this was very, very first one I did, maybe, I think. Um, so yeah, there's number two. Cool. All right. All right. Um, so it's actually kind of fun reading these because I was a nice child from the stuff I'm reading. I was actually kind of a nice. very nice child. I think you were nicer than me. <laughs> I was like, you know, reading about Abraham. I was like, 75 years old? Wow. Everyone definitely has a purpose no matter what age. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, okay, so then after I got to Deuteronomy, and I was like, obviously not having it anymore, <laughs> I changed over to, I would just write, let's see. Yeah, I would just write down the Bible verse. That was just all I would do, just write down the verse. Okay. And then um, I got tired of that, <laughs> actually. <laughs> um, and then I added something where it's actually kind of fun. I wrote down on little pieces of notebook paper names of, like, everyone I knew, like, every name I could think of. And I cut them out, and I would, like, fold them, and then I'd put them in a little box. And then every day I'd pull out a name. And I would pray for that person. And I have the box. You did that for a while. Yeah, I would tape it on to the date. And uh, I would um, sometimes write a Bible verse if I was having time or feeling yeah. like it. Uh, when you get to the end of this book, it's literally just the date, name, date, name, date, name. <laughs> <laughs> just so done. Time is over it. <laughs> um, but that was always kind of fun because it would be interesting how, like, I would pull out a name and be like, oh, I actually know that person like is going through this or yeah um sometimes you would have no idea it would be just a random person who you don't really know but i kind of 
think about doing that again because it's kind of a neat idea. It's a nice idea. Um, yeah. But then anyway, you get to a certain point where there is a random page that says answers. And I would like to read you these answers and see if we can figure out exactly what the heck... This has nothing to do with, like, Bible stuff at this point. Okay. I, I just needed a page. <laughs> this is answers. Number one. Oh, come on. Two. Sean Levi. Three. Red. Four. Yes. Five. A guard. Six. No. Seven. Three. Eight. Looking at his watch. Nine. Yes. Ten. No. Ten. Black. Or eleven. Black. Twelve. No. Thirteen. Four. 14 let's ride what i, I think no you must have been doing a trivia book is. some sort of trivia book something yeah. yeah because i have like i got most of them right but i didn't get no a guard red correct yeah or, i was thinking it was those math books you know those little thin math books we have like math mania maybe but it doesn't sound like math answers like yeah guard red yeah so i don't know that's interesting but i have one more after whatever you're gonna be okay all right, so we're short on time. I got too many. Uh, let me pick the best one. Yeah, pick. Uh, short. Read a really short one. There's a funny one when I was real lazy. Uh, well, most. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I'm not gonna spoil it. Okay. So, Saturday, June twenty seventh. I was not having it. Today we did things and had dinner. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. It gets better. It gets better. Wednesday, the November. last one, yeah. the last entry. No, 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 wait. There's like two more after this. But pretty I was much. So done. Wednesday, November 11th. I'm over it. Today we did. Today I did things. Good night. <laughs> That's You're it. Like, there, mother. <laughs> yeah, I, I did wrote it. In my journal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, okay, let me pick. Let's see. Uh, All right, I'll one. do. So my last one I have is surprisingly a notebook that does not have much in it. Um, I don't really know why I didn't use this one a whole lot. Mm. But I was looking through it, and um, I have two things. One is my to-do list, and then there's one other thing. So here's my to-do list. No date, but I was practicing cursive, so it's all written in cursive, as you can see. Okay. Um, so my list was do laundry, take pictures with camera. Mm. With camera. Okay. Work on fluff book, because at the time I was writing a book about my cat. Work on dress. Sketch, make cards, start pet movie. What was the pet movie? I don't know what that was going to be. Maybe it was, yeah. Paint, yeah. write in book, do club bills. And I actually found some old club our, bills. Our club. So we had a club. this is me playing. I was mayor at that time. And we came up with our own um, secret code. Basically, we just changed every letter of the alphabet. <laughs> And I would write out bills. Yes. About how much you owed. We had a treasury. Rent for um, if you needed to like buy something, I would send you a bill. So I had to do club bills that day. Yes. Um, See, little businesswoman. Refill the kitty litter, dust desk, buy nanny's present, and clean the bathroom. That's what I was going to be doing. Go. And then the last thing I found is. Um, and again, this is me as a kid, <laughs> starting a small pet store. So these are my notes on what you would need to do to start a pet store, because I was thinking about that. Okay. So I have a list of what we would sell. Um, I have, like, a bunch of animals. I have um, small pet food. Um, but I, I'm very realistic. I said a small store may not have enough room for big, like, pet food. <laughs> um, we're, we're starting realistic. I wasn't, I wasn't sure about fish. Probably just the basics. Don't know what basic fish are. Um, You're so... We sell live pets. Up. Bike keep adoptable pets in a small section. There you go. Yeah. Um, I wrote down what are my goals for this pet store. Um... I would like to offer the surrounding communities basic supplies for their pets, but also give alternative and natural options, too. Mm. Um, I was going to make a reasonable living so I can support myself. <laughs> wait. Wait, hold on. <laughs> How old are you? I don't know. That's the thing. There's I'm no going date. To make, I don't no, know. No, I'm not going to make... A normal kid would say, I'm going to make a million dollars. No, you're just making a reasonable, reasonable a living. A, a reasonable living. And just a I reasonable. Said, to use the store to God's glory. That's nice. Yeah. That's um, nice. So starting out, what are some things that I would need? This is These are physical items that okay. I might need. A cash register, a way to price things, mm -hmm. a sign, 
a building or a location, supplies, suppliers to buy from, money with three exclamation points. <laughs> um, money. Okay, so oh, those are my things that I need. And then here are some things that I would not need that are, wait. No, these are some things that are not physical that I would need. Yeah. Um, an attorney to do taxes. <laughs> An attorney, an attorney. Not, not an accountant, an attorney, <laughs> an attorney to do, yeah, to do taxes. <laughs> um, knowledge of what people are looking for, a way to price things. I was really hung up on that because I had that on both. <laughs> um, permits, legal forms, and all other um, permits, legal things forms. that I need to legally be allowed to operate. I would need a Facebook page and a website. Um, and the interesting thing is I said, what services would it provide dog sitting while people shop? And now that's what I do. I do, like, yeah. dog sitting stuff. You were just, you were prepared to do what you do now I was. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then to finish out, uh, I had a, you know, you know, you got to make an action for yourself. I had things to start looking into. Um, I had to survey people to see what they would want. And I had to find out how much um, you would rent a storefront for in Bellevue. And then I had a couple websites that I could reference. Okay. So that was me as And let child. me ask you. Let me ask you. Are you making a reasonable <laughs> living? I am making a reasonable living. Well, there you living. go. So you I got your thing. my goal. There you go. It's not a pet <laughs> store, but it is a pet business. No. So well, there you go, know. folks. That was me it's as true. a child. Yes. I know. She's very mature from birth, pretty much. That's who she was. <laughs> like, that was totally fun. Yeah. You know what? I actually, I think I did call like one person in Bellevue about renting an empty space you did and she just made me feel weird oh because she was like oh yeah we would like a pet store and then she's like realizing I was like a kid yeah right. she's like okay well honey you're gonna need a business plan and blah, well blah, honey blah, blah. and I was like can you just tell me how much it is yeah I just want to know she wouldn't tell me well that didn't work out did it no uh okay uh I'll do like maybe one or two more okay so today me daddy mama nanny uh and a few other people and wait no this is not the one I, okay wait i'm just reading part of it okay um i gave mama her mother's day supposed to be presents it says prance uh eily and she uh loved them she got a wait she got a a reg day ann thing it's supposed to be ra raggedy ann a reg day ann thing that uh i got the a and n though no e very good. Okay, got it. Very good. Uh, I got a Reg to thing that said, S sweet, it says sweetest, but sweetest mom, and I got her card that made her cry with happiness. <laughs> it's very she cries very easily. Okay, and then the next day, uh, today is Mother's Day. That was, I gave her stuff early, as I said. Uh, it also says, okay, can I just say, you were terrible with waiting to give people gifts when you're oh, little. Oh, yes. As I soon as young. you got it, you'd be like, can I get you early? <laughs> I know. Do you want it now? <laughs> right. I'd be like, my birthday's not for a week, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, today is Mother's Day. We went to, okay, now I'm spelling a different way, uh, C-A-I-T-H for church, and we came home. Laura gave Mama her prance, and Nanny gave her a card that made her cry. <laughs> Another thing. <laughs> I worked on my Legos, and me and Mama and Daddy went in the, I don't know what this is, in the S-R, I think I-C-A-T-R. Don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, and I got really what? Some, something wet. I don't know what's wet. Uh, we got C-A-N-S-E-S -S -E food for dinner because it's a... Oh, I don't even know, guys. <laughs> Listen, I, I, uh, S E I S U L a can, and we watched What About Bob, and we got McDonald's food Fuji Sandy, but they forgot to put in the. I forget. I remember this. They forgot oh, to put yeah. in the sugar, so it tasted it really bad. Awful. So Mama called them, and they got. They said we could get free ones, and they were glad that we called. Good night. Uh, okay, I guess I'll end there. Um, so yeah, I only made it till November and then I was just done. The rest of this is all empty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing. Plus, you are not as much of a journaler, which is okay. No. No, it was never really my thing, but I tried. 
And uh, I wish I could have found mine because I journaled a lot. I know. When I was a kid. There must have been so much good stuff in there. Oh well, maybe we'll do it when yeah. I find it. I also have one in there the day I got the Rosemary autograph. I didn't say much, but I said like, "Yeah, I got the most Rosemary autograph." <laughs> so that's neat. Um. Okay, so that was episode two. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Um, make sure to give this video a like and a comment. Make sure to subscribe. And after you subscribe, make sure to press the bell to get all of our videos in your notifications box if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening to us on Anchor, make sure to follow us there and keep up to date um, there because we'll keep uploading there. And uh, we will see you for the sketch show. And then we will see you for another episode of this yes. next month. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for coming. And uh, we will see you then. Bye. Bye. Thank you.